Hello lovelies and welcome to my channel, it's Hila here, Saturday Night Stitch and thank you so much for tuning in. Today's video is a browse through of the October 2024 issue and whilst we're in the end of September, I've got a lot of lovely fiery oranges, reds and yellow from my garden and I've been so impressed with the dahlias. This is the first time I've grown dahlias this year and they're still going strong in my garden and so i thought i'd give you a selection of dahlias today there's this arabian night which is a deep burgundy and i have this dinner plate which is a lovely yellow over here and then this one i don't remember what this is called but it's a very beautiful orange and then you've got some more oranges over here i also have some rudbeckias that are going really strong as well as perpetual sunflower called yellow queen so wherever you are in the world i hope that you're having a fantastic day and this bunch of autumnal style flowers is for you so we'll pop the flowers over there i am using a new filming setup so please do forgive me any teething problems that may be happening right so we've got our october issue which has got a lot of yellows which i think is quite suitable for <laughs> for autumn and for those of you that are following along with me i am using the english uh, translation uh and that's the one that we're going to be going through. I thought that this had quite a fair amount of uh, separates and quite a lot of jackets and one standout pattern for me. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So first off, we've got blouse number 103 over here, which has got some stylizations of some loops that have been added on. And I have to say that this would make making this particular top very time intensive because each of these single loops is like if you've ever made those buttons where you don't make a buttonhole you make a loop and you have to create a, a very narrow tube that you have to turn over and I'm not too sure that that is necessary personally I would just be getting a trim if you wanted to add some lovely delicate detail to the neckline or the cuffs just get yourself a trim that you can put in otherwise it is a very lovely simple design with some bust shaping over here and um, a zipper at the back to have that nice lovely tall neckline so I can see this working quite well for spring uh, sorry for autumn and then we have this uh, <laughs> very interesting style and it's mostly interesting because of the choice of fabric that they have used for this one and it just has these gigantic bits of yarn just sort of sticking out of it not personally sure that i'm a big fan of that sort of texture being added however to each their own so it is a bomber jacket style but very clean cut in the sense that it doesn't have the hem so it's been quite simplified we have a princess seam line over here with some pockets over there ma making it practical and useful so you have a place for your pockets to hang out and it does have that sort of um, almost balenciaga look in the sense that it's sort of shell like and then it comes in and it crops at the waist over there and then we have a parka that did catch my eye in the previews and it caught my eye because of the lace trims that have been sewn on onto the gun flap and I think that is a lovely choice of fabric I love the olive green that they have used I love that it has a casing over there so that you can tie the belt in if you wanted to just create a little bit more shaping gigantic pockets over here that are very useful I can see this one being quite popular and I love how they've used the flowers in it as well. It's quite a nice juxtaposition. Overall, I thought that this whole photo shoot was very aesthetically pleasing for me. I love the use of the forestry behind. Really cohesive and very inspiring. And then we have a very simple shirt over here. Button-up style. However, instead of having a cuff, we have a frilly uh cuff over here which i do think is 
ultimately impractical. However, given that it is elasticated, you are able to roll up your sleeves, which I think is a very important thing if you are wearing um, garments that you want to be very practical. And then we have a jumper over here, very simple, straightforward, so quite cropped, very loose fitting. And this is very much what I see in the shops currently. There's a lot of these oversized sweaters, oversized jogger pants, and they're sold as sets. Interesting styling choice here with the knickerbockers and tights and um, these flat shoes. That's that's something different to what I'm seeing in the shop. And then for me, this was the standout pattern. Now, as most of you know, if you're regular viewers, I do love a good skirt. Um, I love wearing skirts. Um, my first preference is normally dresses, but if I can't do dresses, then I do love skirts. And I love how this has this asymmetrical detail and it has the godets, which give it this lovely sweeping look over here. So definitely this is something that I thought I would be interested in making. I also quite like their styling, how they've used the knitted vest and a lovely top over there. So yeah, so I thought number 106 was definitely quite an interesting one. Now we have had a similar pattern and I think it was two months ago. However, that one had a lot more pattern pieces and it was totaling about 18 or 19 pattern pieces. This one creates almost a similar silhouette one where it's sort of tight from, it's close from the waist to the hip and then it sort of flares out so in that regard it is a similar silhouette but this one has got fewer pattern pieces meaning i am more likely to try my hand at this one okay and then we have a tunic dress that utilizes a very 80s style neckline which has got this rounded yoke here and some gathering and for me, this is so quintessentially 80s because I do remember my mother when she was pregnant with my sisters, my younger sisters, back in the 80s, in the mid 80s. This was the sort of stuff that she was wearing, um, except for it would be like really lovely, bright pink colors. And then we have a long line gilet over here with some contrasting fabric. Very interesting to see how this works. They've used a velvet trim. Not personally a big fan of gilets because I don't find them very practical. They don't work for me with my circulation issues for winter. The second thing that I thought was quite interesting in this issue were these trousers over here. They do have a slightly exaggerated as exaggerated waistband which is slightly thicker they have a side zipper some hip yoke pockets and then you've got some deep pleating in the front so it's almost like a feminine version of the oxford pants that had the deep pleating which makes it quite high-waisted from what i can see on here it's not quite as tapered at the ankle as I would like because for soft gamine principles it does look a lot better when your trousers are tapered at the ankle but I do think that this has potential it looks like it would be something comfortable to wear in autumn so this was another one that I thought okay potentially a maybe an adjustment that I would need to make having a contoured waist on this is to change this from a straight waistband into something that's a bit more that's contoured and that's just because for me I know that this waistband would just roll in on itself so yeah, so that was a good one. And then we've got um, another thing that's showing us how those godets work. And yeah, quite like that skirt. I think that skirt has a lot of potential and I can see it being something popular to, um, to wear in autumn, particularly with a turtleneck. And then we have a very interesting um, fowl cape dress, I wanna say. So it's a normal sheath dress seven eighths of it but then there's the one eighth which is like you take a cape and then you pleat it and it just looks all higgledy piggledy and they say on here gathering adds even more volume to the sleeve now i'm not sure why you would want to actually intentionally create asymmetry 
in the shoulder space so yeah i wasn't too i wasn't too keen on this one but i'd be curious to see how other people might be able to make this work and then we have a version of the workplace sweater <laughs> which is um sweater top proportions so quite loose fitting but you've used a suiting fabric on it um not particularly keen on this i have to say and then you've got the welt pockets that they have added on here which clearly are not very practical given how close they are to the hem so they're quite shallow in and of themselves and i have come to the conclusion that when it comes to be po to pockets they have to be authentic pockets um i think there's nothing more frustrating than thinking that you've got something practical and useful and then realizing that you don't actually have it it's just the illusion of it so mm, not a big fan on this i think you can achieve a professional office look without having to resort to that okay and then we've got the cargo pants which are the variation on these pants that we saw earlier but they just have had some uh, very unusually placed pockets whereby i'm not sure how useful they would be because of how low they are and how this is supposed to be office attire i suppose you could put your calculator in here but these need to be higher up um fabric choice for this works for the trousers not so much for the top that they tried to make before interesting item number three for me was the shirt dress with the integrated tie detail so we've seen a lot of these and i think about five years ago or so there was a lot more of these things around uh, this one's been given extra shaping with the fish eye dots at the back um my own thoughts on these grown on ties i do have a dress that i've made before a bird dress from february 2020 i think which has some grown on ties and I can only wear it in the way that it's got the ties on there. And I do find that quite frustrating because I think that the dress and uh, the style and the fabric that I used would be so suitable to having a nice belt on it just to change it up a bit. But you are always stuck with wearing it like this. Whereas if you look at the lines of this actual shirt dress, you might be able to wear it with a belt and it would look really nice. You could either go with a narrow slim belt or you could go with something wider, something that creates more of a statement. And if you made a belt in the same fabric, you'd sort of be able to achieve a similar look to that. So I think that having made similar style dresses, I've come away from them with the belief that if you want the tie belt, make the basic silhouette in itself and then make the belt in the same fabric and you can wear it like that and that way you have more options for how to style the actual dress itself anyway <laughs> a long rant over i do think that it is quite lovely and it will probably do well we have here a coat because of course we're moving into coat season and this is your very basic coat long line nice deep pockets and we've got a self belt over here and it's been made in a brown and you can't ever go wrong with a nice deep brown for the winter colors it just works really well and then we have a very simple uh shot here and uh, sorry shirt <laughs> a very simple shirt here which is the pink pattern that is to say it's the easy pattern that's easy to trace so it's a great one for people that are just dipping their toes into sewing with burda so it's been given a little bit of a masculine uh, touch to it with this bib front here that we tend to find in men's dress shirts and it's been made in a cotton poplin and the cuff has been made oh very short it's got a very short wide cuff on here but very statementy and then we've got a jacket which has an integrated tie belt and very similar to what I was talking about with the shirt dress. I would think, you know, I would take time to really think about whether I just want to be able to wear this blazer just the one way 
or I do want to be able to do a lot more stuff with it in which case just going with the plain basic silhouette and then making additions like uh, making a belt in the self same fabric would work what I did find quite interesting was the dart structure on this so you've got almost a, a princess seam going down here and normally the Dior darts would be going across like that but here it is pointing up which I thought was quite interesting and then you've got your nice world pocket these sort of jackets are quite nice and very minimalist because they don't have the collar on them so they can create a very sleek minimalist look if that's the sort of look that you like I also liked this skirt in the preview, but upon closer inspection when I got the magazine, I decided I didn't like this front pleat that they have here. Um, I would personally not be trying to make the hem asymmetric. I'd just be going with it straight like that. So yeah, and given that there is the other skirt at the beginning, which I think suits my uh, style a lot more, I quickly dismissed this one for myself and then we have that um, similar to at the beginning with the textured fabric it's the jacket except this time the sleeves have been removed and it's been made into a vest and here you can really see the Balenciaga feel to it because you can see the back here has almost like what I, I like to call it the turtle back because it sort of creates this structure of a rounded back um, over there and you can really get a feel of that um i've never been too big of a fan of that rounded 1960s balenciaga look personally but i may be proven wrong by people who are able to sew this and integrate it into a modern wardrobe that makes it look uh, like it suits and that makes it look like it fits and then we've got the big and small, this really cute section that I absolutely adored. And then we've got the big and small cardigans, which are always so useful. I made one of these long line cardigans a few years ago and I am still wearing it to this day. I probably should make myself a newer one with um, newer fabrics because it's beginning to look bobbled and look really weathered, except for mine was a longer line one but it's basically the same as well so i thought that this was really cute and it is very very practical uh, particularly in autumn and then we've got some really cute trousers that have a lot of interesting asymmetrical detail which um you don't really see it given their choice of fabrics but you could have a lot of fun and this could be a good um, scrap buster project that oversized gilet at the beginning has been shortened and we have this one with this lovely floral dress and she's got some lovely flowers in her sheepskin bag <laughs> really cute really lovely styling and then we've got those trousers again over here and they're creating this sort of really um chunky trouser look that I normally associate with 80s toddler style and then we've got a half zip zipper jacket made in a technical fabric which is perfect for much much colder weathers so I think that the kids section had quite a fair bit of nice usable basics and now we move on to the repeats section where they're basically repeating uh, the best of Berta and I'm hoping that this is a phase that Berta will go through and maybe by next year they will stop doing such obvious repeats and move towards um, like changing up the fabric for instance because at the end of the day there's very rarely something that is new and revolutionary in fashion skirts are still skirts dresses are still dresses tops are still tops but what does make a difference tends to be whatever fabrics or whatever colors are in vogue at the time and that's where we can gain the inspiration from but right now the repeats that they're doing is they're using the same exact photo shoots so that does create some issues um, I think so we have this gigantic poncho made in a technical fabric um, useful yep <laughs> and then we've got this sheath dress number one to eight which i actually have this 
traced out. I actually traced this out way, 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 way back when I first started getting into Burda and I had a, a really um, un, unbeneficial habit of just tracing. And I would just trace hundreds and, of, of patterns and then never get around to cutting into them. So this is one of those ones but now I know that I'll probably never sew this because it's got cowls and I've realized that cowls don't work on me <laughs> and then we have some culottes number one two nine and again this was another one that I traced out because I wanted to make some culottes but now I realize that culottes don't really work that well for me I tend to prefer my trousers to be tapered in at the ankle so yeah so that was fun being thrown back down the bird of memory lane uh, for me and then we have here a gilet in a very structured uh, fabric and an elasticated belt and then over here we have a very simple turtleneck um, except for we've added some zhuzhing over here so we have the grown on neckline and then a bit of ruching around there and then we have a zipper and I personally disagree with having zippers on roll necks. It's just a lot of fuff and complication when sewing with jersey fabric that is unnecessary. So no, Berda, I will not be doing zippers in uh, jerseys. And then we've got a sweatshirt here. Nice, gigantic sweatshirt. The Berda standard with the drop uh, shoulders. And I quite like the contrasting fabrics that they have used on here, to be honest, because they've got the large check and then they've got the cream for the collar over here. And then the cuffs are made in a black. And so I do think that that is quite nice. And then we've got some shorts here, some pleated shorts with a contoured waistband. So really good that that's already taken into account. And then we have a ladies... Um, egg-shaped coat so it does create that cocoon silhouette that we've seen from before with the vest and with the uh, cropped jacket and this one's got raglan sleeves <laughs> so you can see it's very narrow here so that would be very much giving you a bit of a penguin walk so this is what we have with the october issue and, um, you know, so I thought that this was quite a little bit of a solid one. Definitely some items that I would like to make. Had I all the time in the world, I would probably be making uh, these trousers and maybe just taking them in just a little bit here, just to give them a bit more taper at the ankle. And then I do like this skirt i'd love to make this in a crepe or a worsted wool but definitely something wool and i can wear it with tights and boots and a turtleneck at the top or a cropped jumper um, at the top and i think that it would be a really very nice uh top uh, sorry a very nice skirt so that's it now it's your turn let me know in the comments down below are you going to be making anything from this issue is there anything that i've missed that you think would be a gem in the rough or a diamond in the rough as they like to say until then take care lovelies and happy sewing bye